What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and today I'm going to show you how you can quickly and easily create a seamless vector pattern in Adobe Illustrator. Alright guys, so in the spirit of uh, Easter slash spring here, I wanted to show you today how you can create a seamless vector pattern in Adobe Illustrator. Now, uh, what you see here is a collection of different vectors that I've downloaded. Um, this is a stock image from Deposit Photos. So I just wanted to use this as an example. And basically I've got, you know, maybe six, anywhere from six to seven different uh, vector images here. And you can do this with, you know, anything. You could do a live trace, um, which I have a tutorial on, and I'll put a link for that in the description, is how to use the auto trace filter in Illustrator. So all you can do is take your own images, do an auto trace, and maybe take, you know, a couple like I have here. And then what you want to do is just start to kind of arrange them um, in an interesting way on the canvas. And, you know, play around with the size and the rotation and things like that until you get an arrangement that you're happy with. Um, so from here, all we have to do is we're going to select all of these images just by clicking and dragging. And we're going to come up to Object and then choose Pattern, Make. Now what that's going to do, it says the new pattern has been added to the swatches panel. Any changes made while in pattern editing mode will be applied to the swatch upon exit. So that's fine. All it's telling us is that over here in our swatches we now have a pattern. And here you go. So this is kind of the easiest way that I've found to create these seamless patterns. But over here you'll see you have pattern options. All right, And you can name it. You can choose you know, um, what kind of arrangement or configuration you would like brick by row, brick by column, and you know, play around with these and kind of see what, what looks best. All right, so we want to check off size tile to art. Okay, and you also have a few more options here, uh, H spacing and V spacing. So that's just referring to uh, the horizontal space uh, between each pattern from side to side. So if I change that to, let's say 0.5 centimeters, you will see it just added more uh, spacing in between the individual tiles where our pattern is going to repeat. Um, and you can do the same thing for the vertical spacing as well. All right, so you don't, actually that was a little too much. So let's go back because I did pixels. So I want 0.5 centimeters. All right, and that just gives it a little bit of breathing room. Um, you can also choose to dim the copies if you just want to see your original pattern and then you'll see all the other patterns around it. This is basically uh, repeating our pattern, I think three times in, uh, well, once here, once here, a couple times on each side. But once you're happy with the uh, arrangement of your pattern, all you have to do is press Command S and that's going to save it. Okay, saving your Illustrator file. And now uh, here's the fun part. Let's just go ahead and create another artboard so the artboards are basically just like different canvases that you can uh, work on. So I'm just going to add a new artboard next to this one so that I can show you guys um, how this works. So now we have our pattern over here in a swatches panel. We can just create a shape and we can choose our swatch. And let's say I want to make a copy of it and just fill it with a color. A sample of color from here. Add it to the back. So all I did there was create a circle, fill it with a pattern, and then I've made a copy of it, Command C, then Command F to paste in front. But instead of using the pattern as a fill color, I'm just sampling one of the, the blues here, and then pressing Command Shift and the left bracket to send it to the back. Now the cool thing is that, you know, as you change the size um, of your shape, it's going to scale the pattern. So that's the benefit of using a vector because if you were to do this in Photoshop and try and resize it um, at, at a certain point, you know, if you blow it up past the size of the original uh, resolution or the size of your original images, it's not going to look very good. So let's take another example here. I'm going to make another copy, paste it in front, and fill it with our pattern. And now what I can do is using the white selection tool, the direct selection tool, I'm just going to grab both of these handles on the right side and tap it over. And you'll see that as I do that, it's actually revealing more and more of the pattern. 
So this is a you know completely seamless pattern that you can use if you wanted to do something like you know make some wrapping paper or uh, use it as a pattern for you know a pillow or a blanket or shorts or anything like that. Um, this is a great way to do that, um, and it also works really well <clears throat> if you are using this effect on type. So let me just show you that really quick. All right, I'm holding down the shift key and clicking and dragging from the right corner. Any one of those handles will work. And I just want to get like a nice bold typeface so that you can see the pattern inside. And instead of using black, we're just going to fill it with our, our pattern. So obviously, um, <clears throat> you know, there are some gaps in here as you move the type around. So one thing that you can do is if you want, uh, let me come back to our pattern here. Pattern make. You can actually include the background color um, as part of your pattern. And the way that we would do that is just create a bounding box the exact same size as the, the blue outline box here that you see. And we're just going to fill it with, whoa, that got a little crazy. We're just going to fill it with a uh, blue color here instead of our pattern. Never mind, that's getting really crazy and really quick. So let's see, how can I fix that? All right, inside of here, maybe I can add, um, maybe I can add another box in the back. Select my default colors, create my box, send it to the back, and now select a color, sample a color from your image. So now you have that. And I just want to make sure that it lines up nice and evenly uh, within our bounding box here. So it looks like it's a little short on the bottom, and that's why I'm getting this white line on top. But there you go. Now I've closed it up. Hit save once again. And now it's just going to update uh, the Illustrator file and your swatches. So if I make a copy of my type and select the fill we just made, you'll now see that it includes the blue background. So that's a couple ways that you can create, you know, custom patterns um, in Illustrator. This works really well. Again, if you wanted to like combine shapes or you know create any kind of interesting shape like that, um, your pattern will be completely seamless, completely scalable, and easy to use. So um, I encourage you guys to have some fun with this one and uh, create some interesting patterns of your own. So that's it for today, guys. Um, if you enjoyed this video. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and comment, and uh, be sure to sign up for our email list to get our Essential Photoshop Tutorials ebook. Thanks, guys. See you next time.